In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, blessings and mercy of God be upon his prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon you all. Hello. This is a lecture dedicated to the fifth year class, plus high school future teachers, near future teachers. The module is entitled Pedagogy. First of all, we would like to segregate in between the name or the notion or the concept of pedagogy in contrast to didactics. So what's the difference in between the two? Didactics is the theoretical aspect of teaching, of learning. Didactics is the raw material. Didactics is the abstract side that includes approaches, methods, and techniques of teaching as a whole. So whereas when you talk about pedagogy, we talk about the field. The field talks. The field talks. That means the concrete aspects, the realization of the theoretical aspect that is proposed by didactics. Of course, today we are going to talk about the elementary steps in teaching. When you first enter your class in high schools, the first task to perform is a mandatory one, which is called the diagnostic test. What is meant by a diagnostic test? To diagnose, that means to identify, to precise, to use a, a lens, to use a stethoscope, to diagnose weaknesses, basically. To know the level of your learners, the, the level of your learners, Generally speaking, EFL learners are said to be heterogeneous ones. That means a class, an EFL class, is a heterogeneous class. That means we may have advanced learners, intermediate learners, and slow learners, not to say bad learners. So when you, when you make a diagnostic test for your pupils, the aim is to be able to help them start approximately at the same point, which is something quite difficult. But it is necessary. It is necessary. So a diagnostic test, of course, is supposed to be in the form of an exam that touches comprehension, mastery of language, and written production, as it is the case in the official exams, or the back exams in particular. So when we say a diagnostic test, we are talking about something that is not far away from a very important and a prominent strategy, which is called needs analysis. Despite the fact that needs analysis is devoted to ESP classes, English for specific purposes classes, but it is very important to make this comparison. So in needs analysis, there are three dimensions to be tackled. We have gaps, wants, and necessities. Gaps, that means weaknesses. Weaknesses of learners, gaps that, that need to be filled in. Wants, that means what learners want to learn. That means this is something personal. And necessities, necessities of the field, what is required by the field. What is required by the field. This is purely specific. Purely specific. Now, once the diagnostic test is done, it's carried out, teachers are invited to, to treat, to correct 
to deal with learners' feedback through diagnostic tests. That means to correct. It is something that is tiresome, but it is important, <clears throat> especially when the number of pupils is acceptable. We are not talking about we are not talking about classes that are overcrowded. We are not talking about classes that are overcrowded. We are just talking about classes that include not more than 25 or at most 30, 30 pupils within the, the same class. So, so here the teacher is invited to correct, to, to investigate, to, to see where are the weaknesses of the learners. For example, I give a, a learner, learner A, has a problem in, in comprehension, has a problem in, in the way of answering WH questions, for example, in answering true-false questions, or in answering, for example, uh, so uh, uh, questions related to vocabulary, synonyms, opposites, or uh, phrases that have the same meaning with, with words offered by the, the test itself. Are the learners have the problem at the level of a grammar? At the level of grammar, for example, they have a problem of making the negative interrogative or uh, the passive, uh, the passive or the, the direct indirect within the question that says rewrite sentence B that, so that it means the same as sentence A. Others have the problem at the level of writing, at the level of writing. So here, the teacher is highly recommended highly recommended to propose what is called, technically and pedagogically speaking, is highly recommended to arrange remedial works. So, what is meant by remedial works? Remedial works from remedy, from therapy, from treatment. To treat what? To treat gaps, to fill in gaps, to fill in gaps. How are those gaps going to be filled in? Through extra sessions, though it is something that is uh, rare to find the teacher making extra sessions freely, especially nowadays. Or early at the beginning of the year when teachers still have time. So remedial works are Mandatory, obligatory, obligatory for those teachers who feel that they have to better the level of their learners. Exactly like what Franklin Denial Roosevelt once said during his electoral campaign in the American presidential elections in between, so in between the early at the beginning of the 1930s, he said, I have gazed at the faces of hundreds of Americans. They were having the frightening look of lost children. They were saying in themselves, we are caught in something we don't understand. Perhaps this fellow can help us out. Exactly, it is the same. Our EFL pupils are in a dying need for a fellow teacher in order to save them out from this calamity, from this deficiency of being unable to produce a sentence, a correct sentence. So the aim, the ultimate aim of an EFL teacher is to help learners be able to produce a sentence which is correct at the level of structure, at the level of grammar, at the level of pronunciation. But at the level of examination we are concerned mainly with Syntax and grammar. If a teacher succeeds in leading a pupil towards the ability to produce a correct sentence at the level of syntax, subject, verb, object, at the level of grammar, affirmative, negative, interrogative, and the correct, uh, correct tense, simple or perfect or continuous, it is a perfect uh, realization, a perfect conclusion, a perfect achievement. So remedial works, as we have said, are an important task to be performed, especially for those teachers who feel that they are engaged in helping learners make good results. 
But the problem is that remedial works do not stop at this point. That means early at the beginning of the year. They are, they are working in harmony with all the elements of the official program. In other words, for example, after the diagnostic test uh, is already done, now starting the official program, point by point. For example, when you reach the point of, of, of the grammatical point that is within a specific unit, for example, ancient civilization or, for example, ethics in business or, for example, uh, uh, astronomy and the solar system. Or in, so there are specific uh, grammatical points that must be mastered. But once, for example, you encounter, for example, the fact that a vast, a vast range of learners or a group of learners or learners who have difficulties at the level of making the, for example, the passive voice because of their bad knowledge at the level of the normal ordinary conjugation, which is the active voice. So here, the teacher is invited to make a pause, to stop for a while, and, and make and arrange, and arrange a remedial work. Why? Because it is beneficial for both the teacher and the learner. The teacher, yeah, if he or if she doesn't feel satisfied, doesn't see, for example, the, the general satisfaction from the part of learners that they have clearly understood. So, so here he is required to make a remedial work. So, he is supposed to equip learners with the active voice, with the normal conjugation of tenses, for example. So, simple or present, for example, the stem, the stem plus S, E, S, I, E, S, and the like. Simple past, stem plus E, they, or irregular verbs, they change partially, totally, or remain as they are, or uh, certain irregular verbs, they do not change, and then perfect tenses in which they have, have, has, had, and will have plus, past participle, continuous tenses have been the to be, is am, a, was, were, plus, stem, plus, ing, and the like. These are all active. It's okay. These are related to remedial work that has been urgently arranged and programmed for the benefit of pupils. Then moving towards the official point, which is the passive voice, then the passive voice comes in an easy way, in <coughs> an easier way. So put in the active voice, which is concerned mainly with the verb. Now, I'm not talking about the inversion of the subject and the verb, which is something very simple. So we are talking about the verb. So just we, we, we uh, attract, we uh, ask our fellow pupils to focus on two main changes of the level of verbs within of the level of, of verbs, the, the, the verbal, let's say, phrase within uh, the, the passive sentences. So we say, for example, the derivative is of to be is um, are, be, being, bang, plus, plus, participle. So here we start with, for example, with a simple present verb, as am, as am, are, plus, plus a stem, which has already been existing, plus the e day. This is the simple present. Simple past, we have, we have just one change, which is the was on the word, depending on the object. And we have the past participle already existing because it, it, it is like the simple past, generally speaking, uh, when the verb is regular, irregular, partial, or total change, or no change at all. Concerning the perfect tenses, we have just one change, which is, which is the been, have, has, had, already existed, and the past participle already existed. The sole change is just the been. The continuous tenses we have to be already existing, but we need to add the been, the been, the be of the derivative of the to be, and the ing of the, of, the, of the past participle, the ing of the past participle, the ing has been replaced by the ed in order to, 
to keep the two conditions of the passive, which is the derivative of the to be and the past participle. And this is the point. So when you have something official, and this, this official point cannot be covered without a remedial work to the previous, to the previous background, yeah, so here it is a mandatory remedial work to be carried out in order to cope with the official point. As it is said in Arabic, it's something important. So uh, here within this lecture, we have just talked about two things. We have talked about the diagnostic tests and their importance at the level of, of teaching a foreign language, the English language, here in particular in Algeria, and we've been talking about remedial works. Those remedial works are very important, whether at the beginning of the year or throughout the official sessions, the official sessions. And teachers mustn't abandon this, this, uh, this element, yeah, this element which is the remedial work in order to help learners uh, help them be able to, to reap satisfactory results. And of course, here, there's a bit of fact to be, to be mentioned, which is, which is the previous teachers of, for example, the second year or the first year might have, might have not tackled elementary points, might have not covered all the points of the official program. And now as you are a third year class teacher, all the whole heavy burden is on you. Yeah, unfortunately it's on you. You have accepted as a teacher, as a terminal class teacher, you have accepted to teach this class. So you have said, okay, I have accepted this a challenge. Accepting this a challenge obliges you to, to fill in the gaps of the previous teachers so as so as to, uh, to get uh, good results by the end of the year. I think uh, I have to conclude and say that an EFL teacher is not, uh, is not uh, a normal language teacher. That means uh, cannot compare to the, to the L1 or the mother tongue teacher, simply because, because all the surroundings yeah, despite the fact that we are living in the age of technology, in the age of YouTube, in the age of Facebook. Right? So, but we are living, learners and teachers are living in a context that is totally different from the original context, from the authentic context. Talking about authenticity here is important. Yeah, teachers are invited to use authentic material in order to help learners feel that they are in one way or another, living in, in an original context that helps them that helps them acquire the original, let's say, the original forms of language, whether at the level of writing or at the level of speaking. It's something important, not to forget the cultural aspect, not to forget the aspect related to identity. So whenever we are talking about teaching a foreign language, we are talking the language as such, language production, at the level of speaking, at the level of writing, at the level of grammar, at the level of the four skills, plus culture, plus grammar, and the like. But here we have to make our learners aware of the fact that they are Algerian, Muslim, Arab, and Temazigh pupils who need to, to preserve their principles and who need to be able to, 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 to communicate with the other generations, with the other communities in a way that keeps their identity is something important. So learning a language is something mandatory, especially when we are talking about the universality of the, of, of the English language. But this does not deny the fact that we are obliged as teachers to make our fellow pupils convinced, aware of the fact that we are, we are, we are giving hand, lending hand to them in order to learn this language as a universal language in the field of science and technology. And that's all. Our language is coming at the beginning, at the, at the first rank, in order to keep our identity, our Algerian identity. Thank you very much for your kind attention and see you in next occasions.
Bye.